But anyway, up next, we're going to take a look at an interview that's blown up a little bit online between a Newsmax host and a GOP congresswoman, uh, where normally there's a lot of alignment between Republican officials that go on this network. But in this case, this was Congresswoman Kat Kamek, a Florida Republican who voted in favor of the recent gay marriage legislation, the Respect for Marriage Act. And this host took real issue with her vote and really went off on her about it. But I thought she responded very well. Take a listen. But on another level, I'm very concerned about this, Congresswoman. I want you to address this. In my view, the government unconstitutionally co-opted marriage, which was the exclusive purview of the world's religions. The Congress of the United States has said to Christians... Jews, Muslims, Hindus, and the rest of the faith community that their definition of marriage is no longer valid. Under what constitutional authority does the Congress have to redefine marriage, an institution that predates the creation of the American government? Well, Chris, as you know, DOMA, the Defense of Marriage Act, was ruled unconstitutional by the Supreme Court many years ago. So this was taking a law off of the books that was ruled unconstitutional. And as a follow-up, the reason I supported it is because I believe in the Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment. I'm a constitutional conservative, and I believe in freedom for all, not freedom for some. And for someone like me who believes in, for example, the Second Amendment, and reciprocity of laws, equal protection under the law, equal application under the law, this is no different. Not to mention that over six pages of religious freedom protections were added in that we've been fighting for decades for. So I would say that there's a lot of bad information out there, a lot of willing uh, to try to raise money off of misinformation off this bill. At the end of the day, this actually protects churches, schools, adoption agencies that are faith-based. It adds new protections for religious organizations and churches. And it simply says that we need reciprocity and does not require that a state must marry a same-sex or sex or interracial couple. So if we're going to talk about reciprocity of the Second Amendment, that should apply to the First Amendment, as well as the Fifth well, and the Fourteenth. On- Ooh, that was she ate his lunch and left no crumbs like that was queen energy and she's spot on you and i've talked about this that bill went so out of its way to protect religious liberty it's not even funny i said all along that there that anybody who was trying to tell you otherwise was a complete hack and i think she's right people were trying to fundraise off this there's a lot of fear-mongering and disingenuous people who are running with this i actually read the bill you read the bill i had no concerns with it whatsoever and when it comes to the constitution Again, I mean, she totally mic dropped him. He knew he didn't know he was talking about at all. These people run around and claim to support the Constitution, claim to support limited government, claim to be about individual liberty, and don't have the first clue about how to actually apply those principles. Um, and so if the government's going to be involved in marriage, as I've said ad nauseum, I don't think they should be, right? I do agree the government should have never got involved in that in the first place. But until they're not, you have to have equal application of the law. That's a basic, basic 14th Amendment principle. It's a good principle. And I'm so tired of the people who kind of try to use that as a as a get out of jail free card on this discussion, because I never see you at state legislatures. I never see you actually working to get the government out of marriage. I just see you tossing that out there when we talk about gay marriage. So it's not really about getting the government out of marriage. It's about precluding some people from being able to access this institution in which government bestows special favors. And it's corrupt. Yeah, I think what the host said where he's attacking her on this vote was just so full of misinformation about this bill. Like, he said that the government is redefining, is telling churches what marriage... No, it is not. No church in America anywhere is going to be forced to perform marriage that they don't believe in. They're also not in any danger of their tax-exempt status being endangered by this. It specifically says multiple things in this bill... All current federal protections for religious liberty are not touched. They are not weakened in any way. This law can't be taken or interpreted to endanger the tax-exempt status of a group based on the basis of marriage. What the law does is two things. It repeals DOMA, which federally defined marriage as only between a man or a woman. It actually did tell churches, Christian churches that do affirm same-sex marriage, nope, that's not legit. It repeals that. It says the federal government will recognize, will be neutral on the question of marriage, will recognize both. Uh, and then it says that states don't have to legalize gay marriage. And all of this would really only come into effect if the Supreme Court were to overturn its decision. Um, but that's unlikely, but it's possible, which is why we're having this conversation. Uh, it says states don't have to legalize gay marriage, 
but they do have to acknowledge legally a, a marriage performed in another state, uh, that including a gay marriage. And that's actually mandated by the Constitution's full faith and credit clause. So this guy has no idea what he's talking about in terms of the Constitution, in terms of what this bill does. And she's so right. There has been this tremendous, frankly, scaremongering campaign about the Respect for Marriage Act. All these groups, including some groups that I have a lot of respect for the other work they do, I'll name some names, the Heritage Foundation, the Alliance Defending Freedom, they have pushed downright misinformation about this bill, scaremongering about all these things about religious liberty that are simply not true, are simply not based in the text, are totally alarmist, and they're fundraising off of it. They're sending emails scaring people. Your your church is going to lose its tax exempt status. No, the bill literally says it won't affect tax exempt status. Right? All these things that are not true. And it's really upsetting to me. I mean, a majority of Republicans support gay marriage now, guys. You gotta let this one go. We can have your beliefs. You, you should be free to have your conscience protections and everything. But stop scaremongering over an issue you lost long ago. It is constitutional. It does protect religious liberty. It is a very uncontroversial bill on its merits, but it has been made out to be something that it is not by so many people who are smarter and who should know better. And that's really, really frustrated me to no end. Yeah, I think that's spot on. I've, I've seen a lot of people who are afraid about this. And I mean, just to give some backup too, like the Mormon church signed on to this bill. They gave their approval, right? They And I don't think they'd be doing that. They actually thought they were going to lose their taxes of status. They make a lot of money. Um, and they're still not pro-LGBTQ marriages, right? I don't nope. think they intend to perform them at all. Um, but you do see some people being realistic about this and actually just acknowledging like, if you really don't want the government involved in this, you really want to try to start de-escalating this uh, this issue, then you need to have approval for this and let uh, marriage be open to all. And then we can start talking about the state's role in it, right? But equality for all until we get the state out of the institution. That's the right approach. So I was proud to see the Mormon Church do that. I thought Kat did a really good job handling this interview. I'm excited. I'm speaking with her this weekend in North Carolina. So guys, if you're in the Raleigh area, come see us Saturday night at the North Carolina Federation of Young Republicans Awards Christmas Dinner. It's going to be a good time. 